This is an example of what we're going to be building in this series. We're going to be working on a menu, does some hover things. Uh, we have a couple sections here, so we're going to be working with IDs and classes. And we're going to have this scrolling effect. You can see it's kind of scrolling over the images. And then at the bottom here for our JavaScript portion, we're going to fill these, these, um, there's words, these, images is image gallery from an array and we will dynamically load those into our page. So that is our goal for this project. All right, so to get started with this project, I have an index page that I haven't done anything with yet. We're going to do a style sheet. But we're going to start on the index page for the moment. I went to pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S, pexels.com, and I did a search for some images I chose two images. I think I did one was seashells. I did a search for seashells. And then it comes up and I chose, I think, this one. And you should be able to select which size you want. They're free downloads, so you can download them for free. Hence the free download. Anyway, um, and you can also, I think I also did turtles. So if you want to get the same image as I did, that's where I got mine turtles and then I went down and chose one of these that was I think this guy right here so if you want to whatever images you want those are what I chose so this is that image and I also chose the turtle image and of course I have images of stitch for the photo gallery so uh, that being said we're going to start on the HTML page and what I'm going to do is a lot of copying and pasting because you don't need to watch me in this video um, constantly fat finger things, which I do all the time, but you can put the video on pause and then type in what I've done and I'll explain it as I go. All right, so uh, we have our index page that makes that comment and makes sense and we have a title of some kind. I'm gonna do divs, IDs, classes. That's kind of what we're working on uh, learning about in this particular HTML portion. And so let's see, so let's look at where we're headed and then we'll figure out how to make that happen. So basically what you can see is different blocks, different sections. You can see that there's this image section, there is another section of code, and that section of code is scrolling over the image, that's pretty cool. Here's a third section, so if you see this as, as blocks or paragraphs, in our HTML as different groupings of code that we're going to be working on. Hopefully that'll give a good visual of where we're headed. So here is another section and then there's a gallery section and there's a footer and there's also, I forgot the header. So if we look at this as different pieces, different sections of code, it'll help us organize and figure out what on earth we're, we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm going to tackle this first section and I use that term loosely because there is an HTML tag called section, but this first group, this first block uh, that's in black, and I'm just gonna copy and paste in some code, and we'll talk about what it's doing. All right, so we have uh, a big block of code, a big tag called header, and header is an HTML semantic tag, so it's indicating that this is heading, header type information, and so that is a tag that we can use. It's not one I made up. And it's making up this big black section at the top here where we're gonna be putting our, looks like our navigation. So, and sure enough, there is a tag here called nav, and again, nav is a semantic tag, which is by itself not doing anything except organizing our code in such a way that we can, um, we'll be able to access it nicely through our CSS. It's pretty clear if, if you were just looking at this for the first time, you were picking up someone else's code, semantic tags give us the ability to group, um, to group other tags together. And it has meaning if we look at it, for example, header, that's pretty meaningful. It, it means something, I understand what that is. And if I look at the word nav, that's obviously where my nav is gonna go, which is also handy for screen readers who are trying to read our web page to somebody who can't maybe visually see it. Let's look what I've done here, uh, if it's showing up, there it is. So we also have some ULs, so we looked at ULs last time, and in our ULs we have some LIs that are holding on to our links, so that's a good start. Uh, we also have this class, 
And so we're going to learn how classes work here pretty soon uh, in this video. This is kind of the point of this. Uh, but we're calling this, and section dark is just a word I derived. I gave it section dark, and we're going to see how to implement this in our style sheet. But for the moment, just recognize that we've attached this class, and I've given it a name. It can be whatever name you want it to be. That's a user-defined name, meaning the user gets to, the programmer gets to make up whatever uh, they want, and I used section dark. It's not doing anything yet because I haven't applied any styling to the class. And so there's a lot of tags that are going on here for not a whole lot of work, but the one that's doing most of the work right now is this UL and LI. But we're going to utilize all of this. So hopefully by now with all of my yammering on and on, you've been able to get that all typed in. If not, then um, put it on pause and get it typed in. All right, so now let's deal with this picture portion of our code. And what I'm going to do for that is copy in. So let's see, I could even do, uh, this is this is the navigation. Navigation and heading, maybe that'll help. And then in here, this will be our, um, I'm going to call it parallax image because that's what that effect is called, parallax image. Uh, maybe first. And so the idea is with parallax is that we're creating this effect where we have an image and then our text can roll over the top of it. So that's what parallax means uh, in this definition. And so let's see what we've done for the parallax image or for that image. I've created this thing called div. And what div is, is the same thing as this header is doing. It's simply organizing my code into a division or a section, but I don't have a specific semantic tag that defines it. In other words, header is also a tag that's using is being used to organize this code and div is a tag that's being used to organize this code there was a day when all we had was divs and so divs was a way for us to, i guess another word would be block out or to group together uh, some of our tags but and recently we got new tags like header which are doing the same thing so div is lingering from days past but it gives us the ability to, if we don't have a semantic tag that would otherwise work, like there's no tag that says parallax, for example. So we're using div as a replacement for something like header or nav or section or footer or some of these other HTML tags that we have to organize some of our code so that we can style it in a cool way. And we'll see how to do that shortly and to encapsulate or enclose other pieces of code. So here we can see a div that's got a class of image one, and we're gonna see how this all works. I keep saying that, I'm sure. And inside the div is another div that has our title in it. And so our main div here is designed to have this image, and I've created a second div that's gonna have our, um, our text across the middle here. So that being said, now let's create this second piece. And I say second because I kind of see these two going together, but I guess it's because we're doing image, section, image, section. But let's just keep going with that. So I'm going to apply another series of tags called section. Section is also code that's being used to organize or group together related tags. By itself, it's not doing anything. It's just giving us the, the ability to group them together. And inside of here, we have an H2. And then I have a paragraph with just some random lorem ipsum text. Lorem ipsum text is simply filler text that has no meaning that programmers use a lot to just fill in text. In other words, if you have Emmet on your machine, you can do something like lorem LAR50, which will create and tab, which just creates 50 random words. So I don't know if they have any meaning. There's a discussion to be had about whether they're actually Latin or not. And I don't want to have that discussion. All I know is I've got some filler text. All right. So recognize again, we're grouping code together using, maybe you can think of parent tags, enclosing tags. Sometimes they have meaning, like header has some kind of meaning. 
div is just sort of a generic tag that enables me to group elements together. It doesn't really have a meaning by itself. Section is an HTML tag that has meaning. So that means that I'm putting a section together. So semantically, these are all doing the same thing, okay? But in our mind, they're doing something different. From our programming mind, this is doing a header. This part is going to be maintaining our picture. This part is going to be maintaining the text. Um, kind of an FYI, usually uh, if you're trying to validate your code, I'll cut this out for a moment. Uh, validators usually ask that, and it's not, you'll notice that there's a yellow squiggly line. Sections usually uh, by semantic definition, it kind of means like a section should have a heading of some kind and some text, kind of like an article of a newspaper is, is the intention of sections. So you might get, if you don't put an H2 tag in there, you might get the squiggly underline or a warning if you're trying to validate it, but it's not necessarily wrong, but we have one in here, so we're good e either way. All right, so this is creating that first parallax sections. Uh, I hate to use that word section, blocks of code, blocks of work. So this is our first block of work. This is our second enclosed block of work. And we're gonna do the same thing for this one and the second uh, heading two. So basically I'm just copying this code. So I'm going to copy it, paste it, and then this will be my second, okay? I'm also gonna give this an image two and we'll call this second section. And then this will be heading two. So I'm just, Filling in this part, recognize that this is code that's already done, obviously. Ours isn't going to look near that cool yet. Ours is looking something like this because we're building it, okay? So right now, all we're doing is getting the HTML in place for us to do the cool stuff with the CSS. All right, so this is where we're headed. Okay, so parallax image, here's our second section, our second mm, organized piece of work. So we have another div. It has a class of image two. We're gonna understand classes very shortly. It also has a section which is very similar to this section. It has the H2, it has a P tag, but it theoretically has some different information in it. And then we have this image gallery that's gonna have some images in it. We're gonna skip that for the moment. We'll use that for the JavaScript portion. And then I'm going to add the last piece which is the footer here. And it turns out that there is a footer tag also, so an HTML5 semantic tag called footer, which implies that the code of the pieces of the elements that are inside of the footer are footer type information, and they are. So this is currently our HTML. It's not very pretty yet, but that's the job of CSS, is to get take our structure and make it look from here Let's give it some design and some pop and make it look like this. So that's where we're headed next. All right, so now we're gonna style this header up at the top. And it's got this black background. It also has some navigation elements to it. So in theory, this is what we're going to, um, to get a hold of or to, to style, two, 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 two. All right, so um, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna copy in some code. So we're gonna look at Let's see where we are. All right, so we have, um, we're gonna start with the UL and we're going to do a text align center. And so just to be clear, a text align center is, here is an element, all of my children need to be centered. So there's the UL, uh, the UL. All of my LIs need to be centered in the container in which they exist. And so they seem to exist in this nav, which is, exists in the header. So they are all centered um, in the middle of that, the container. Okay, still not where I wanted to go yet, but it's a good start. And so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to apply what's called an inline block. And before I, oh, it did it automatically. So before I save, but it saves automatically. 
uh, because by the way, if you're in, um, here's a sidestep, if you have auto save checked, it'll save it automatically. But anyway, so before we did this display inline block, what would happen is, let me just comment this out, what happens is by default, LIs are what we call block elements, which means that they are going to exist on top of each other. Just like if we put in a paragraph, if you put in a paragraph, it doesn't sit if you if you at like h2 so here's an h2 tag we haven't made a line break in order to put the paragraph side by side right it just does it automatically and that's because by default this is called a block element by default li's are blocked and in fact let me just give you a little analogy here if i had done two a's a tags side by side just to give you a visual and i'm not going to keep them this way but it's just to give you a visual if i had done two a tags side by side by default a tags are in line which means by default they will show up side by side so some tags are by default they will line up side by side automatically and by default some other ones will be on top of each other if you put two images side by side or if you put images one after the other in your html they are also in line so they will show up side by side so it's important to get a concept on that because we have these li's that are showing up on top of each other and we don't want that that's their default so we're going to change that and that's what this code is saying. This is saying, I know your default is to be, um, be block elements, and you can still be a block element, so I can put borders around you and, and margins and that kind of a thing, which is good, but I want you to be an inline block. And we'll see more of how that comes into play in a minute, but what's happening for sure now is these LIs that were on top of each other are now side by side. That seems like a little bit better plan. All right, so what else have we got? We have, all right, we have some A, some anchors that are kind of ugly. So they are by default underlined and are they're close together and they have this ugly link default color. So let's deal with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a link to or a style to the anchor tag itself. And no, I'm not. I'm going to pretend like I am and then I'm not going to do it. Okay, let's try that. All right, so if we look at the A tag, which is the anchor part of this, right? So an anchor tag, we're giving text decoration none, took away that underlining. So we're saying, I know you're an anchor tag and you're supposed to be a link and you can still be a link, but just get rid of that ugly underlining. And padding five pixels. So let's be clear on what padding is, because this is also an important part of this video. So if I go to inspect element, and let me spread this out for a visual here, and let's click on, uh, I'm going to find the anchor tags, which is here, and I'm going to click on it. So I've highlighted it here in my doc type um, inspector is selected if yours isn't selected automatically so inspector tab and then this gives you all your html elements you can use this little uh, arrow icon to highlight over elements so you can get more information about them and we'll we'll be doing that a lot throughout the video because it's a great tool to figure out what things are doing anyway I'm going to also, instead of clicking on this, you can also drill down and click on the element here in, your, in the uh, structure. So the point is that I've clicked on this A tag, which I just gave padding 5 pixels to. And on the right hand side, you see this thing called box model. And box model gives us an indication of whatever margin, border, padding, what all that means. So the way that margin and border and padding works, border is kind of obvious that I'm going to put a border around something. So padding is the distance between the content and a border. So let's just see that. If we put a border around the A tag, border, uh, I'm going to do two pixel black. We'll just do a solid. Now what you'll see is around each A tag, you'll see a border around them. And if you look 
at the highlight, so I've got this five highlighted here in my inspector, and you notice that it's a purple color. I can't move my mouse up here at the same time. Oh, you can kind of see it. There's a purple. So the distance between the content, the purple shaded area, and the border is the padding, which is the same indication that's going on here. So I'm getting an I'm getting a exact number of five because I put five in the padding. You can see five is here, and so that gives me a good visual of how think why are things smushed up or spread apart or what is padding. If I wanted to see uh, what might be, what does 25 pixels look like? I can change 25 in here so I can get a visual of what it's going to look on my page. Okay, that looks kind of yucky, but it gives me an idea of what it looks like. And if you look to the this area here, it automatically filled in that style for me so I could see if I just want to put padding on the top, I can use padding dash top and then there's that value. So if I wanted to see what it looks like with no padding, well that's kind of yucky. If I wanted, I'll put it back at five. Now recognize this is just a playground, it's just a sandbox to try and experiment with things so you can learn how they work. You can see the two here in my border and then margin is the difference between wherever the border would be, if there's a border, and the element on the next element above it, the next element below it, or to the right and left. So currently I don't have any margin, so nothing is highlighted in yellow. If I put, let's put 25 in our playground area just to see, and you can see the yellow showing up above, so that would be margin top. So this is a good place to trial and error so you can understand. Sometimes it's hard to remember where is padding, where is margin, how do they work? And so I'm going to make this zero again. So it's nice to see that padding means the, dis the difference between my content, which happens to be 39 pixels wide, which isn't really the point of this scenario, but it gives you what's going on. Um, between my padding is the distance between my content and my border. And then margin is the distance between my border and the element above it or what have you. All right, so this is a great tool to play around with, to get comfortable with. Sometimes we apply CSS and we don't understand where it, what it did. So this is a great tool to get comfortable with. All right, I don't want a border on here. I just put borders on. Oftentimes I'll put throw borders onto things just so I can see what it is like now I can certainly see with this border on here I can certainly see besides my dev tools the difference between five pixels and what 25 pixels would do so it is a good tool to practice with all right so I'm going to take the border off because I don't really want it I was just using it as a visual all right so now let's deal with these links so we've got these ugly colored links by default and we're going to change that so we're going to use, again, I'm going to copy and paste. All right. So here I have a, this, these are called pseudo classes. So I have an A colon link and an A colon visited. So what this indicates is that these are different stages of our A tag. In other words, my color went away. And there's a reason. Let's do, let's put this up purple for now. Okay, there we go. So an A link is a link tag that hasn't been clicked on. And then an A visited tag is somebody's already clicked on that link and so sometimes browsers will show it in a different color. But I think in my case, I want both of them to be the same color, whether it's a brand new link that somebody hasn't clicked on or whether it be a link that's already been visited. So by virtue of putting this comma here, I am enabling both of these to receive the same the same um, styling. So if I had put a space, that would be inappropriate in here, and we'll look at that. Uh, notice how my colors didn't work. That's an error. So a comma, it, it's not always an error. It's an error in this case, and I'll explain the difference. But for now, at this moment in time, recognize that if I want to tags or two elements in this case to have the same styling, I can do that using a comma. So if you're a visited or you're an a tag that's a uh, unvisited link, you're going to be purple. All right, so then we're going to add one more pseudo class called hover. 
And what that is, is if someone puts their mouse over that A tag, another state is hover, and therefore I'm going to do some other things. Other hover, <laughs> kind of rhyme, never mind. So I put a background color for that A tag, and I gave it a, um, a, a different color of the text because otherwise it's not gonna show up as well. So here is where I'm going to give you an example of where inline block has meaning. So when I give the a li an inline, I made it side by side, but I also did a block. And the reason for that is, well, that's not a good example, great. Okay, I'll do it another time, I apologize. Don't hurt me, all right. So let's go back to, sometimes I go off script and then I realize that's not a good example of what I was thinking. So uh, this is though, we're good, we've got a good example here. So the last part of this particular puzzle, if we look at this, is we're gonna change that back to white, but uh, I've got this black background. And so the way I'm gonna deal with that is, I could just acknowledge the header. So if I had done, let's see, let's do a header, and I'm gonna change the background color to kind of a dark, not quite black, but almost black. All right, so it works. I mean, I've got some fixing up to do. Looks like I can add some padding to push off that text off of the, uh, the parent or the header, and that works. Uh, I can, I can style a particular tag name, but I also wanted the footer to be uh, this black color. I wanted it to look the same. And so that's where this class section comes into play. So both of these coincidentally have a class of section dark. And so instead of, and I could, I suppose you could do, I just got done telling you I could do this. So I could apply that same, that same styling to both of these tags by separating them with a col comma and putting the tag name, that works. But another way to handle this, and what's gonna be, you're gonna see more often, is because each of these have the same class name. So I gave both of these section dark, which means that similarly to what I just did a second ago, I can get at both of these with one name, and that's gonna be section dark. And so that should be doing the same thing, but notice now I had to I had to use the selector was a little bit different and then I had to use the period. So the period indicates that it's a class and I'm using class name section dark. So this suggests instead of looking for an HTML selector, an HTML tag called LA, LI, LA, that's a city in California, LI or an A or a header or a footer, Go look for it with the period says, go look for a class that's called section dark. So everything that has class section dark, therefore, is going to get this background color. So I can apply in a similar fashion to putting the comma, I can apply more than one thing to both the footer and the header at the same time, which is going to make it from a maintenance standpoint a little bit easier to, um, to maintain. All right, so I'm just going to add a couple more things here. I'm going to add a height. So both of these are gonna be a height of 50 pixels. I changed the color to white, which means that I can go back to my link being, instead of black here, let's make that white, which was what my original intention was. And, oops, I did it on the wrong one. This was supposed to be aquamarine. And then my purple was supposed to be white. Okay, there we go. So now I have identical stylings to something that's called class, that has a class name instead of um, header, comma, footer. All right, so that's the purpose of class, is to give us a hold on something, or gives us, gives us, not only, gives us the ability to style more than one element that otherwise would be unrelated, like header and footer, they're not the same tag. So now I kind of make them the same by giving them the same class name. All right. Next thing I want to address is back to this thing of margins. And, and I really, if I look at the example, 
this example is all the header is brushed up against the sides. There's no white space. So how come this has white space? All right, so for that, I'm going to take you back to the dev tools and we're going to look at what's causing that. So I'm going to put my little icon over the uh, looks like right here. So you can see, first of all, that I've got a huge gap of yellow, which indicates that there's a lot of padding or margin in my element, which I don't want. So what we're going to do is if I look at, I'm going to click on, let's see, let's click on body, for example. So body is the beginning of my HTML, right? So in the body, by default, you can see that margins are automatically applied by default by every browser. And most browsers are about the same, but not always. And so I want to get rid of those margins in order to brush up. Start, you're starting to see now, okay, now I'm getting those edges br brushed up. So I've still got a margin up here someplace. So whatever this is, so, or let's see. So maybe it's under HTML head. Something has another margin up here. So rather than dealing with all of that, I brought you here just to show you that browsers have a default setting that we may or may not like. So what we do is we call browse, we make what's called browser resets. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, at the very beginning of this code, I'm going to do an asterisk and an open and close curly brace, which means apply to everything on this style sheet. I don't care what you are. I want you to have no margins so that I can get rid of the browser's default crap. And I don't want any padding. So I will be in charge of padding and margins. And so now I've gotten rid of that white space that was around the top edges of my nav, my, my, nav, my um, header, the edges of my footer. I'm going to push my footer down here eventually. But this is what's called a browser reset. And remember that the browser is going to read things in order and apply things in order. So when we said no padding on anything, nothing got a padding, but we did overwrite that for the A tag and the A tag says, well, I'm a little bit more specific than everything. So the browser will give the padding to the A tag. So that's how we get control over margins and padding uh, in our documents. All right, we're on our way. We're looking good so far. Got ways to go, but we'll make it happen. All right, um, I'm also gonna set some defaults, body. I'm gonna set, uh, the font family for the page to Arial, make it look a little, I like the rounded ones better. We're going to do something else, line height, line height, and we'll do maybe 1.5 EM. And remember, line height is, if you didn't see it, just jump before your eyes, gives us some spacing, some line spacing. So that makes things a little bit nicer, maybe 2.5, I don't know, just something a little bit different. Um, EM is a relative, let's just make sure we're clear on that unit. EM is a relative measurement. What EM says is, and 1.25, if you look at whomever your parent is, the body is the parent, so it would be the default, in this case, the default of the browser. I just got done telling you that the browser has defaults. So whatever the default is for your parent, in this case, it would be the um, HTML document itself. Line height indicates uh, one would be, one EM is whatever the default is, use that. Well, that looks awful. So let's do one and a half the default, which is what one, one, 1. 1.5 is. So whatever the normal is, if it was, um, if the normal is eight, then we do eight plus four would be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So whatever the default is, do it one and a half bigger. So an EM is a relative reference to whatever the parent was. So a percentage of the parent, in this case, the document. So if you see EM, that's what it is. One would be the default. And then if we did something smaller, this is gonna be really stupid, but if we did 0.5, we'd be doing half. Ooh, that looks pretty cool, actually. We would be doing half of whatever the parent's default is. So not really a appropriate here, although it looked cool for the moment. All right, 
So we're going to go to one and a half EMs. All right, so next thing we're going to address, I think, is we will add the images to our uh, above our sections. So in other words, we have these images here, and those images are what we're containing in this class image one for the first image. That will be this one. And then we also had a class of image two, I believe. So we need, this is the turtle. So recognize now that I'm going to address these divs, which I've made kind of unique in the fact that they each have their own individual uh, class names. All right, so let's address those. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do image one. Recognize that there's a period which indicates that I'm referencing a class name. And we're going to give this div, oops, this div, oops, nope, div class image one, a background of whatever, let's see, that one, let me just, I'm just going to copy it in instead of blabble. That's a word, blabble, right? Yep. All right. So I'm going to come here to view and toggle word wrap so we can see it on top of each other. All right. So we're going to use this background image uh, selector property and the URL of whatever the URL happens to be. All right, so it looks like I have it there. It's all squished up because it doesn't have a lot of space. Its only space is as big as, in other words, this div is only being as big as the content it contains. So it's only as big as first section. So we're going to change that in a moment. But let's also do the same thing for image two. We'll give it its background. And background image URL. And that was turtles, I believe. In my case, .jpg. Okay, so it looks like the turtles is there, but again, only as high as the content that is contained within it. So we're going to uh, change the height of both of those. And I think I'll do it up here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, similar to what we just did a moment ago, both image one, and image two, I'm going to apply the same styling so they'll both get the same uh, the same styling. I guess that's what I said in different ways. So I'm going to say the minimum height I want you guys to be is 200 pixels. So I'm forcing that to be 200 pixels or higher. Okay, sweet. All right. So a couple other settings that I think I'm going to apply to this and I will paste them and explain them. All right, this background attachment fixed is what's going to allow us to scroll over our images. So you can already see that happening. So by fixing the background to this div, everything, and, and we've, we've fixed the background and we've made that height 200 pixels. So that height's going to stay at least 200 pixels, and then the content will scroll over the top of that div, which is this div here. Okay, We've said background size cover. So what that means is there's an image that we've put in that background. If that image was, say, half this size, so let's say this image was just up to here because it's a teeny image, cover says stretch and skew however you need to, but spread that image over this entire element, which is what it's doing. So it might skew it, but that is what cover is doing. There's some other ones as well, but we're going to use cover to say just stretch, and it's kind of disadvantage here because we don't get to see the turtle so much, but it is being covered against that whole element. All right, so... What else do we have? Background position bottom. So that's how do I, if I'm going to skew this element, if I'm going to push this image across this element, how do you want me to position it? Do you want me to position it from the bottom up, from the top down, maybe from the left more important, from the right more important? What's my starting point? And the one that's asking the question is the browser. What's the starting point? And so by saying bottom, I want more of the beach to show than the, the, than the ocean portion, so I said background position bottom. 
But how you choose to do that is obviously going to dep be dependent on the image itself and how you want it to display in the browser. So that's what these settings are for. Uh, fixed so that it doesn't move versus scroll so that we will scroll past it. Let's just see that. So now it scrolls with the content as opposed to um, fixed, I mean it's not going to roll, it's not going to move and the content's going to scroll over the top of it. We've set the minimum height of both of them. Uh, we set the background. And, yeah, okay, so let's do a little bit Let's do a little extra extra because it looks like there's a little extra extra done on these. There's like this nice little um, border and there's some stuff down here. It looks like some shadowing. So let's just do some little additional touch-ups to this. And then um, I'm going to give it a border. Again, I'm going to apply this to both of them at the same time. So I gave it a border with double five pixels. So that makes this nice little border around the edge and I'm gonna add a box shadow. And the way the box shadow works, uh, I'm gonna give it, just because I've already played around with the values, this is the horizontal positioning. Well, my image is all the way across the page, so I don't really care about, I don't want the shadow to be off the page, it's not there, so I'm gonna do zero. The next one is the vertical, how far up or down. And so, what did I do, five pixels? The next one is blur, so how blurry do you want it? And I wanted it really blurry, so I made a really soft blur. And then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think that's what I ended up doing. So uh, I guess is the one I'm working on now. So you can see that there's a nice little shadow around it. And if you're not sure on things, well, let's just change it. What if this was just three? What would that look like? Okay, so it's a pretty hard edge. So that's why I did 30. Um, five versus, let's do something like 50. You can see the difference there. So I don't think horizontal positioning is gonna do anything because the only thing it might do is pull it away from my edge here. See, so yeah, so since we moved it to the horizontally to the right, we've lost some of it right here. If you like that, that's great. It just depends on what you wanna do, obviously. That makes sense, right? I'm gonna leave mine at zero because, you know, it's mine. There we go, and probably not 50. Let's do something smaller. There we go. All right. So now we've got that nice scrolling effect. And we've got a nice little shadow in place and we've got some nice borders. So I think we're good with our pictures. So now let's deal with this word being in the middle. I think our words here were nicely centered in the middle. So let's deal with that. Uh, before I add that though, uh, I think I'm going to jump ahead and I jumped ahead of myself and what I prefer to do is uh, I want to deal with this footer first because that will lead into what we have to do up here with, the, uh, with this stuff. So uh, in this example, in my example text, I have a footer at the bottom and if I made this smaller, which is hard to demonstrate here, if I made this smaller, the footer, um, the footer stays at the bottom. And I'm having a hard time demonstrating that and keeping this all in frame. But on our web page, our footer is at the bottom, and it's staying at the bottom naturally. Let's see if I can demonstrate where I was headed. I'm fighting technology and I'm losing. You ever have that feeling? Yeah, happens to me all the time. All right, well, it's staying at the bottom, so maybe I will leave that example for another day. Oh okay, yeah, I will leave that example for another day then, because it works well for what we're doing. I think we're good for the moment. All right, uh, let's <clears throat> deal with our little, um, these things. So let's look and see where these things are in our HTML. These things are here and they have their own class because I needed to be able to get at the text a little bit differently than I needed to get to this div with the image one. Because if you remember in image one, we had lots to do, but that had nothing to do with our, our uh, tag in the middle because I want to be able to address this text a little differently than I did with the image. So it's got its own class. 
And I'm going to do class P text. And we're going to do text align center. And let's see if we can get that to line up in the center. Okay, so that part's working. And then in our video, we have our ours down here. And this is a little bit out of the context, the scope of this particular video, because we'll talk about positioning um, another time. But we need to do positioning in order to make that happen. So I'll just put the text in here to make it happen. And then with the promise that I will explain it on a, another video. So for the moment, um, P text, I'm going to put what's called positioning. So I'm going to give it position absolute, top 50 pixels, left 50 pixels. And it's really hard to see, but right now they absolutely, 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 both of them position themselves 50% from the top of the page and 50% from the left of the page, which is not what I want. So for reasons that we'll understand soon enough, in my image one and my image two, I have to add this other thing called position relative. So I'm going to put that here and that should move my move my little elements back in place. So again, we'll do positioning another day, I promise. But now you can get at this P text if you want to also. Maybe you can give it, uh, what will happen if we give it a background color? Maybe gray, what does that do? So maybe you want to add some padding so that it'll spread out a little bit, padding. Um, 25% or something, or 25 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Um, you could add some styling to it. Um, the other thing I would probably do as I'm looking at this is I feel like this, in, this text is kind of smooshed up against the sides. Sounds like a good candidate for padding also. So if I look to see what is containing, what tag can I get at to push both of these away from their sides, I will look and notice that both of those happen to have a section. So there is a very simple tag that I can do on both of these and I'll add a padding 25 pixels randomly, I don't know. So that's pushing those off of the edges. All right? So this is, uh, you know what, we'll add in the, um, the images too. So let's do that. All right, so I'm just going to do a last minute. Let's add in the image gallery. So that goes in above my footer. I gave it a class of gallery and an ID of JS image. So I'm going to use this for um, the JavaScript portion of the video, which will come next after this video. And then in here, we'll just put some images. I'm just going to put the same image for now because it's easy. Stitch, think dot jpeg. Make sure that that is in fact stitch dot jpeg. Oh, spell stitch wrong. S i t t c h. Let's see if that works. Oh, it's a PNG file. That's why. PNG. There we go. There we go. So now I have a stitch, and these are inline, which means that if I put more of these side by side. They're going to do their best to show up side by side unless there's no room, then they'll just go on to the next line just like a paragraph would be. So this is another example of these by default are inline tags. And that's what we did remember up here, we made these inline by making them go side by side. So let's do a little styling to our image gallery here, which will lead us into the next video where we'll do some JavaScript stuff with it. All right, so let's do, I'm going to get at the gallery. Um, let me just do this and I'll explain it after I type it in. All right, so what am I doing here? So up above when we had, let me do something so that it's not so I'm just going to copy in some code. All right, I don't like those yellow lines, little squiggly lines, and it's just upset because I made a style without some styles. So select without some styles, but let's see what we did here. So up above, we had image, like for example, we had image 
one and image two, and we separated them by a comma. And we said that this means that I could apply something to both of these tags. And I said the spacing was an error sometimes. In this case, it was an error. So let me explain what a spacing does, because notice I've done that here. I'm not getting an error. So, and when I'm hovering, oh, cool things are happening, sweet. So what happens here is we're being very specific, meaning that I, I am telling the browser, I need you to find a class by the name of gallery. So it's gonna find the class gallery, which is right here, okay? And then inside of the gallery class and only a child of, which is what this space is, only an image child of gallery. So in other words, there's, there's children, these are images, are children of gallery, which is what this space indicates. If I had an image that was outside of the gallery, which this one is, it's not in the section, right? So this image will not get the styling that this one is getting. This one's being very specific. It's saying only images of gallery. This image would not get it, and I will prove that. Let's see. So if I scroll down to the 13th stitch, unlucky stitch doesn't get the cool styling that all the others do because it's not included in this selection, if that makes sense. All right, well, I'm gonna get rid of this poor unfortunate 13th dude. All right, so if I look at this a little more specifically then, if I hover over any image that is a child of the gallery, then let's make a background color. Now this is kind of, this is another, one of those cool little things. We have given color before. We always say background color and then just give it a generic color or a, some kind of hex value. Well, if you use this RGBA, what you can do is define specifically what is the red, blue, and green value. 255 is the highest, and then zero is the lowest, obviously. And then this is opacity. So one is, uh, one is, let's see what one would look like. Okay, one is completely non-transparent, and then zero would be transparent. So if I now hover over, see it's not, there's no color. So the value here is between zero and one, and I gave it a 0.8, and you can experiment, obviously, so you can choose what one look works best for you. So I did that. I gave it a border radius of 15%, so that's these rounded edges. So I thought that the background, so I'm applying a background color on a hover, I'm rounding the edges, because I think that looks kind of cool. And then I did this little thing, transform scale. So you can make this item, this element smaller or bigger. So if we did, ooh, let's try 180 just for, when I'm learning new stuff, then I always give it something super extreme. So that way I can get a really good clip visual of what it's trying to do so that I can scale, get it back, scale back, no pun intended, to make it kind of different. Anyway, so uh, I think we've done gallery now, great. And so we've demonstrated that images are inline, and I can do that by making the browser bigger, and we can see that they're staying inline. So we've seen a good example of inline as well. So in this video, hopefully, you've gotten a lot of overview or refresher on quite a number of things. The difference between divs, ID, classes, semantic tags. We've seen inline versus um, block elements and how we could turn a block element into an inline element. We've done some cool things with classes. We've done some, we haven't played with ID yet, but we're going to. And uh, then we did some kind of cool stunts along the way with this parallax thing. So next step is we're going to play with some JavaScript on this file.